North Carolina, where Duke head coach David Cutcliffe is overseeing not just the rebuilding of the Blue Devil football program, but also the renovated Brooks Field at Wallace Wade Stadium. Duke is looking for a third straight winning season for the first time in over 50 years. That's all behind a defense led by All-American Jeremy Cash. Northwestern counters with a defense that is one of the best in the nation with an upset of ranked Stanford earlier this month. Folks, it is a beautiful day here in the triangle for a Big Ten Atlantic Coast Conference matchup as number 23 ranked Northwestern comes to Brooksfield at Wallace Wade Stadium to take on Duke. And hi, everybody. I'm Tim Brand along with Dave Archer and glad to have you along for what really looks like a Big Ten ACC challenge. Five games this weekend, five matchups. And when you look at this one, boy, you've got the Northwestern in the top 25, Duke 2-0, and and they've got a quarterback that really they like, first-year well, starter. David Cutcliffe knows quarterbacks, Tim, and, and Thomas Sirk takes over. It's his opportunity, and he's been through some adversity towards Achilles tendon in 2013, but they really love his ability to throw the ball down the field with accuracy, but he's a big kid, six foot four, 200. 20 pounds and he'll bludge you between the tackles now Jamison Crowder is gone to the National Football League who makes plays John L Barnes stepped up big time he picked up the slack in week one against Tulane 11 catches 109 yards and a touchdown he's an acrobatic twisting type receiver that can make big plays he'll get his opportunity today Northwestern is a big strong Big Ten team and they will run the football they like Justin Jack he's not only big and strong but he's quick boy you love Justin Jackson if you look at him on tape just a sophomore as a a true freshman rushed for almost 1,200 yards and 10 touchdowns a year ago, but he has all the ability to make you miss. He runs with power in his last seven of his last 10 games. He's over 100 yards, including against Stanford on opening weekend. He went for 134 yards and on 28 carries. They call him super back. They probably should call him Superman. His ability to line up all over the place gives tremendous versatility. This wildcat attack. He'll line up at fullback, tight end, and in the slot. 100 seven career receptions for the senior Dan Vitale. Wildcats of Northwestern, the Blue Devils of Duke. It's academic. Let's go down to the sidelines. Here's Roddy Jones. Thanks, Tim. A matchup that I'm going to be paying close attention to is that Northwestern defensive line against the Duke offensive line. Now, Northwestern defensive line is talented across the board, but the guy who's the most versatile is the big guy, six foot six, 290 pound defensive end Dean Lowry. He lines up at end, but can be moved inside to tackle and pass through situations to get some heat after the quarterback. On the offensive line for Duke, they're led by All-American, All-ACC center Matt Skura. Now, Skura started 29 games in his career, and he upset the defense. He upset the protection for first-year starter Thomas Sirk. Uh, experienced center is the quarterback's best friend in that right arc. <laughs> There's no question about it, Roddy. Skura is a big-time player, and this is going to be a physical football game with those two sides of the ball battling up front. ACC football is brought to you in HD by your local Tire Pros dealer. Win a VIP trip for two to the ACC championship in Continental Tires at TireProSweepstakes.com. Northwestern won the toss and elected to defer. Duke will have it first. Devon Edwards and Jonathan Lloyd will be deep. Standing at their own goal line, and he is dangerous. This kip will be taken by Lloyd at the five. Gets a little bit of a hole and closed down quickly out to the 22-yard line. A return of 14 yards. Take a look at the impact players brought to you by Food Line, Arch. Well, when you look at this uh, running attack for Duke, there'll be a number of guys carry the football. Shaq Pell's one of them, but Sean Wilson, outstanding versatility, great speed, can break you down and take it to the house. Look forward to watching Sean run the football. And Roddy just talked about Matt Skura. He's the anchor in the middle, the Remington watch guy in the middle, calling some of those uh, form some of those pass protections for Thomas Sirk in his first year starting. Sirk, 6'4", 215-pound, redshirt junior. Well, he's a big, tough kid, uh, Tim, but they love his accuracy throwing the football down the field. Look forward to seeing that on display today. Sirk's averaging about six yards a carry, running the football. Here he throws on first down. It's complete to Wilson. Secondary closes down quick. Wubuke was there along with Harris. When you look at these food line impact players for the Wildcat defense. Dean Lowry just talked about him. Big guy up front. And Anthony, Anthony Walker, a run and hit linebacker. He'll be all over the field today. Second down and four. This is Cirque. We talked about his running ability, and there he is. Tackle made by Drew Smith. 
Now, Cirque with that ability to pound it straight ahead, you're going to see a lot of that today. Their zone read is off of the sweep. David Cutcliffe loves the ability of Cirque with his physical presence at 6'4", 220 to go straight downhill. You look at the Duke running game. It's gotten, it seems like it gets better every year, and they're up over almost 250 yards a game Cirque, in this early season. Cirque picked up the first down. Here they go straight ahead. This is Powell. Shaq Powell with a big hole out near midfield at the 49-yard line. Shaquille Powell, 5'10", 205 pounder. Yeah, running behind Patrick, Skura, Stone, that interior three. Powell just finds the crease and hits it straight ahead. He's the power guy of the two backs. Excellent job hitting it straight ahead. Gain of 18 yards. Sean Wilson comes back into the ball game for Duke at the running back position. They're running a little swing to him. Gets a good block on the outside, but then runs into the safety. Igwebuke. So when you look at this wide receiver core, they're going to have to block in this screen game. Get Wilson the ball out in front. Good initial block there. And Igw Igwebuke came in and not dropped the hammer on Wilson, but not before he was able to pick up five yards in a little swing screen. Igwebuke, the third leading tackler on that defense. McCaffrey and Barnes come to the bottom of the screen. Again, they go off the right tackle. This is Wilson. Met by the entire front of that Northwestern line. Robbins, Lancaster, Walker. Well, Tim, this is the game within the game. Northwestern is huge up front in the defensive line. They're about 300 across the board. And Duke is good size in their offensive line as well, but that's how they want to play is physical up front. Circle look to the sidelines, see if there's any kind of adjustments. Northwestern's made a host of uh, changes to get some pass rush specials in the game. Third down and four for Duke. Ball just inside the 45. Good looking opening drive for Shirk and the Devils. Steps up, fires, back shoulder thrown, incomplete. Intended for TJ Ramming. Well, TJ Ramming, we talked about Jamison Crowder being gone. Janelle Barnes is the guy that's going to pick up the slack. And here's another kid, TJ Ramming, out of McEachern High School, Powder Springs, Georgia. Just a freshman, back shoulder throw. I think he wanted to throw down the field. When you stick the hand in the air, you're looking for the ball down the field. And Sirk tried to go back shoulder, not on the same page. Yet. That was good defense, Arch, by the all Big Ten corner, Nick Van Hoos. Yeah, he was all over him. Miles Schuler lets this one go through the end zone for a touchback. 44-yard punt, no return. They'll bring it out, and that's where Northwestern will start the afternoon. Our food line impact players on offense for Northwestern. Talk about Dan Vitale and everything he does for this team. A lot of versatility he provides for this Northwestern offense. And Christian Jones coming back off injury, had a huge 2013. All he does is catch the ball for first downs. Big kid, 235-pound wide receiver. Be a tough matchup for Duke today. Thorson in the backfield with Jackson. Arch talked about Jackson in the pregame. He's a load. He's only 5'11", 190 pounds, but he can rumble. Look at him. Out close to the 30. Pickup of nine. Well, Clayton Thorson, the redshirt freshman at quarterback, is a kid that nobody knows much about other than the fact that he was an outstanding player in high school, as a lot of these kids are. But they think that he has the ability to run the football. He's got excellent size, and he's a developing passer as he moves along in his career. Here's his first pass and bounces it out. It's complete close to a first down. Oh, waving it Intended off. for Justin Jackson. They said it skipped. He got it on the skip. Uh, we talked about Jeremy Cash and his ability to make plays in the secondary. He's in a lineup at linebacker safety. He's an All-American, and he'll be all over the place today for Duke. And Devon Edwards, unbelievable impact this kid. He's got six returns for touchdowns, four of them on kickoff, two interception returns for touchdowns. They call him the best athlete on the football field. Third down and one for the Wildcats. Clayton Thorson now played Kevin Hogan in the first game when they upset Stanford. He was the freshman of the week after the Stanford game. Line up in the I formation. Straight ahead over the pile. First down. Jackson again, the ball carrier. Singleton would get credit for the tackle for the initial hit. DeAndre Singleton. Pick up of two. They only needed one. Hey, look at the surge up front. Vitale leading in. We talked about his versatility, but excellent job of running after the hit. Tim, you mentioned Singleton made the hit about two yards deep in the backfield. Around the right side goes Jackson. Breaks one, can't get to the other two. 
Well, that's his secondary. Breon Borders is end up going to end up with a tackle, but Deion Singleton again, Tim, comes up from the safety spot. They call the safeties on this team the cheetahs. They run all over the place. They're interchangeable. They'll slide up in the box and play at linebackers. They'll slide back and play safety. Jim Knowles, defensive coordinator, thinks that provides some, some uncertainty, if you will, for the offense. Thorsten throws, tries to slip it in, picked off. Intercepted by Devon Edwards, looking for blockers, still on his feet. Edwards inside the 30. Almost got through. Austin Carr, the wide receiver, had to make the tackle. Edwards' first interception of the year. We talked about Devon Edwards. This is his fifth of his career. Two of them he's taken back for touchdowns, and he tried to get this one back. It turned into a punt return for him. Excellent job of blocking by the Duke defenders to convert into offensive players. But what a play on the ball. He high points it in the first opportunity for Duke deep in Northwestern territory. 24-yard interception return by Edwards. Powell comes into the ball game. Now slides up next to Cirque. Cirque will keep it. Slides inside to the 21. Jalen Prater was there. Yeah, good job. The tackle. And, they, and they've rotated. They, they talked about uh, this this Northwestern defensive line. They'll rotate as many as eight guys in. Odenabu, the defensive end there. He's the second team guy. He's in the game as well. Odenabu has been in a couple of the tackles already. Here's Powell again, straight ahead. Karen Tacklers inside the 15. Brings the Duke faithful to their feet, down to the 12. Well, this will be news if Duke can do this. This is something that I think Northwestern, I think many thought that looked at this game, didn't think Duke would be able to do is run straight ahead at Northwestern. If they're able to do that, it will be a tough time for Northwestern to get this Duke offense stopped. One of the hottest days of the year down here in the Triangle. First and five, throw into the end zone, too high. It was intended for Braxton Deaver. Yeah, well covered by Northwestern. They were not fooled on the play action fake. They had defenders in the area. This is a tough throw. See a number of defenders in the way, and he had to throw it way too tall. So good job by Northwestern to really not be sucked in on play action. There's the red zone offense for Duke. It's one of the best secondaries in the country for Northwestern. This is Powell, the ball carrier, down inside the five. When we talk about play calling. Scotty Montgomery returns after a stint with the Pittsburgh Steelers as the offensive coordinator now. Here's Scotty right here. He's doing the play calling, getting it down to the sideline there, relaying it into Thomas Sirk. Down close to that area where they used to take out Anthony Boone last year, and they put Sirk in. They've been doing that with Bame. Here's a circ. Touchdown, Duke. Circ, five yards. Touchdown. The Blue Devils are on the board. Using every bit of that 6'4", 215-pound frame. Well, excellent job by Northwestern to take away the throw. They zone it off, and Cirque at 6'4", 220 says, okay, I'll go get it myself. Just a physical play by the big quarterback because Northwestern's in perfect position here to take away the play. They just can't get the big quarterback on the ground. Extra point, Ross Martin. Good snap, good hold, and it's good. It all started with the interception. Return 24 yards and set up this touchdown by Thomas Sirk. And right now they're giving Northwestern a devil. A look at the Brown family before today's game. Of course, Kelby Brown and Kyler Brown, two of the outstanding defenders at Duke. Kelby out with a torn ACL. And then, of course, inside there they are standing up. That's Kelby Brown, senior Northwestern offensive guard back in the late 70s, early 80s. His wife and mother, Connie Erickson, three-year letterman. There's Kelby. Kelby Jr. up working with the coaches. Unfortunately injured his knee in camp this year. Was coming in back for his sixth year. Uh, he now is an integral part of what's going on with the linebackers yeah, here. Too. Absolutely. Here's Solomon Bolt. 
Well, Northwestern's got to get themselves something going, and that means getting back to the guy that, that really is their bell cow. They've got to find a way to get Justin Jackson running. Well, He's here back he is. in the game. And here he is. Breaks one, breaks two. And picks up about five. Boy, when I say you got to find a way to get Justin Jackson going, he found a way to get himself going right there. He broke three tackles on this play. He's hit in the backfield right there. Steps out of that tackle, steps out of that tackle, and then lunges forward for six. Excellent run by the sophomore. Here he is again. Big hole. Jackson has got the first down. Northwestern will move the chains. And when you talk about running backs, Roddy, talk to me about Justin Jackson. Let's go down to Roddy. Guys, I really like Justin Jackson at running back, but head coach Pat Fitzgerald said that one of the advantages that this Northwestern team has is that they're bigger than the Duke defense, especially up front in the front seven, so look to get the running game going here on this drive. Yeah, that offensive line, Roddy, you're right, goes 305, 305, 290, 310, 297. Uh, That's at, a load. Yeah, look at the rushing so far this year. Just a stitch under 300 yards running the football. And this guy is the bell cow when you start talking about it. He's only 5'11", 190. Had a 28 carries for over 130 yards against Stanford. Second down one. and eight. A little swing pass out to the right. Dickerson. Borders closed down quickly on him. Cash and Edwards to make the stop after a gain of just three. Now pushed him into a third down situation. And again, I... This is Northwest is a Northwestern team in their first two games has really done a nice job on third down. They have not done very well so far in this game. Big opportunity to stay on the field here. This is a long four almost five that they need for the first. They overload the left side throw back to that direction and they're going to be short of the first down Northwestern's going to have to punt. Mike McHugh made the catch but Carmichael was there with him. And the fourth leading tackler for the Blue Devils made the stop well short of the first. Well, he's, he's pretty close to him, actually. Here, they're going to flood the pattern to the left side, and then Schuler just comes underneath. The ball thrown just a stitch behind him, and that might have kept him from picking up the first down, but Northwestern's kept their offense on the field here. This is Volt and Vitale in the backfield. Power formation. And the push ahead got the first. Yeah, got the Vitale push. The super back there in behind his big quarterback got a little bit of a shove, and I think that helped out. Just looking for a surge and then maybe a little bit of help. And why not call on a superhero, the super back? Fidali, number 40, going to shove his quarterback for the first down. So good gamble there by Pat Fitzgerald to depend on his offensive line to get that first down. Jackson comes back into the ball game for Northwestern. And he's hit immediately by A.J. Wolf. Picks up one. Now penetration kills any type of offensive play. And certainly run plays that are designed in the middle. Wolf get a night through immediate penetration and stops Justin Jackson in his tracks. Quick out pattern is complete. It will be short of the first. Miles Schuler made the tack, made the uh, catch after a pickup of six. Yeah, good quick decision by the young quarterback. Get the ball out there on the hitch route, and now they're in a good manageable third down situation here. When you talk about Pat Fitzgerald, you talk about toughness. He exudes toughness, and his team plays that Looks way. Looks like he wants to suit uh, up. One of the great players in college football history. His kind of game, third down and a long three. Penetration in the sack. Deion Williams got through cleanly and made the sack on Thorson. The devil linebacker defensive end is a slash player right here, standing up, looking at the quarterback. They've changed that position a little bit. Kyler Brown will play it, and Deion Williams will play it. They have him standing so he can see into the backfield, have a better feel for the zone read, or when a quarterback escapes, he was all over it when Thorson escaped out of the pocket. That's a loss of 13, so it'll be fourth and 16. They're waiting for the punt, but that's the end of the first quarter. Duke seven, Northwestern nothing. 25 conference titles between these two. An interception by Duke. 
And Thomas Sirk with a touchdown run, and Duke leads seven nothing after the first 15 minutes. Well, this Duke defense knew they were going to be challenged by a, a hard-running Northwestern team, and so far the Blue Devils have shown up in grand fashion defensively. They've done an outstanding job of getting Northwestern off of the field. Jim Knowles working with his defense on the sidelines. Tell him it's all about geometry and angles, fellas. Pursuit angles. Flags fly at the end of this. Jamie Taylor is called for the infraction. Our first quarter stats brought to you by North Carolina Education Lottery. Well, obviously Duke holds the advantage in the total off uh, total yards, but it's the turnover is really the difference in the game right now. So. Straight ahead they go. This is Wilson. Wilson across the 15 to the 16. Gain of two. Let's go down to Roddy. How hot is it down there, Roddy? Hot day here in Durham. Tim, it, it's so hot that they're announcing some heat index advisories on the, the Megatron, on the PA system, letting everybody know to stay hydrated. It must be nice for you guys up there in the booth in the air conditioning, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Second down and eight. Fill a bucket with our shirts. Now when you talk about, I thought it was interesting they started making the heat index announcement just as Northwestern ran on the field for pregame warm-ups. I thought that was that was very interesting. But but you, if you look at this staff, their whole staff's in shorts, so they're they're pretty comfortable down there. It looked like they maybe they're going to get 18 in after the game. <laughs> we got to get a shot of you in your shorts. Third down and seven for the Blue Devils. Well, good job by Northwestern here to force a third and long. Now this is really. Uh, they're backed up as Duke offensively. Northwestern have an opportunity to flip the field right here if they can get off the field. Duke spreads the field sideline to sideline. Sirk with time throws quickly. This is completed to McCaffrey. And an excellent play by the corner. Van Hoos. Van Hoos, the all Big Ten performer on the outside, does an excellent job. He's playing the wide side. He reads into the backfield, comes off of the guy he's covered. See, look at his eyes in the backfield, watching the play, comes off John L. Barnes, up to make the play. That's excellent play by the corner in the flat. So now we get a look at Will Mundy, who comes on for Duke to punt it away to Miles Schuler, who's standing at his own 35. Monday gets a knuckleball. Everybody will get away from as it hits by the 30. Gets a Duke roll down to the 24, 23. A 59-yard punt by Will Monday. And as they look at Monday, we'll tell you this Saturday is gorgeous, hot, but spectacular on the campus of Duke University in Durham. Boy, they've been working down here in Durham on the campus of Duke, and I mean working fast, getting it done in a hurry. Bulldozers came in right after the final game last season when they played Duke, or Wake Forest. Went to work right away, took the field down about 10 feet, brought the stands down, took the track out. Duke University alumnus Steve Brooks and his wife Eileen committed $13 million to Duke Athletics. Football field is now known as Brooks Field at Wallace Wade Stadium, and what a beautiful facility. And great hosts. This is Justin Jackson with the carry, picks up two. That running game's just not there yet, Arch. Averaging less than two yards of play so far. Yeah, Duke playing big at the point of attack, doing an excellent job of, of really flooding a lot of defenders. They're doing a really good job of gap control, not allowing Northwestern to get edges and creases in there to create, create holes for the run game. Thorson has to. Roll way right. That's going to be incomplete out of bounds. Austin Carr, Deion Williams chased him out. Well, Tim, here's Jeremy Cash, what he's done today. Outstanding tackle for loss. Now watch him play the, the option play. Blows up the play, forces a fumble. And then you want him around the line of scrimmage. Here he is on the quarterback draw, makes another play. Jeremy Cash is an All-American. He's playing that way today. Well, he not only gets there to make the tackle, but, I mean, he punishes you when he gets there. He certainly knows the difference between come here and sick him. Third down and nine for Northwestern. Thorson steps up in the pocket, overthrows the pass. I right, just didn't like it. You saw the, the, how demonstrative it was at the end of that, end of that play was Thorson 
on the throw. Watch his reaction now as he lets this go. He's expecting his quarterback at a certain spot. Like, you know, what are you doing? You got to get where you're supposed to be. So a little bit of confusion out there maybe with the receivers. Thorson a little bit frustrated right now. That's certainly where the Duke defense would like to get the young quarterback is frustrated with the way things are going. Garrett Kidd certainly wasn't where he thought he would be. Fifth, five three and outs now for Northwestern. This is Ryan Smith. Good coverage again. 39 yard punt. Zero on the return. They were all over him. Well, both these defenses are doing a really good job, Tim, on first down. They're forcing long yardage situations on second and third down. Second and nine. Give it to Powell. Powell runs into that same combination. Robbins, Lancaster, Walker. Well, the only way you loosen it, uh, this up is one of these quarterbacks is going to have to make a play down the field throwing the football. And it may not just be one play. They're going to have to start to spread the football to the perimeter. Maybe some bubble screens, get some guys involved outside. Create some one-on-one -on -one tackling situations. Third down and six. Play clock really has not been a factor. Down to 15 now. McCaffrey and Barnes come to the bottom of your screen. As Cirk gets the play squared away, makes the adjustments. Northwestern may have jumped off that right side. His ball across the middle is caught by McCaffrey. Breaks the tackle and now slides all the way down to the 25-yard line. McCaffrey broke the tackle, bobbled the pass. Walker finally chased him down. Well, you can't say enough about Max McCaffrey. He's going into harm's way here when you run that inside route. He knows the safety's coming. But he squeezes the football much like his dad used to do going across the middle Ed McCaffrey. What a great catch by Max McCaffrey and make a play right, for his quarterback. Play. Offside defense that penalty declined. Holding on the defense that penalty declined. Result of the play is the first time. So he, both penalties declined and they take the play obviously. Yeah you've got to make a play a ball tip McCaffrey keeps it keeps his concentration on the play takes a big hit for the safety steps right out of the hit and is up the field. What a nice play by Max McCaffrey. Duke has first down and 10. This is the longest drive of the game 37 yards swing to Wilson around the corner knocked out of bounds on the 10 yard line by Anthony Walker. Well, it's about matchups and the ability to get certain players on certain players defensively. And Wilson's the guy we talked about his versatility. Fake it to him, now throw it to him. Prater, 51, the linebacker, can't get there. Wilson up the field for the first down. Those are the kind of matchups Scotty Montgomery's trying to get the offense matched up against the defense. They try to go straight ahead with Powell and don't fake anybody out. Anthony Walker stepped up and made the tackle. Nine tackles now for Anthony Walker, the middle linebacker. Talked about Walker, the fresher, the sophomore, number 18, right in the middle. Watch him read the play, just gap, steps right through the gap and makes the tackle in the backfield. Two tackles now for loss by Walker. He had 10 against Stanford, was the Big Ten Player of the Week. Donnell Barnes in motion on second and 11. Picked off the big fella up front. Lowry, Dean Lowry with his first interception of the year. Well, what a nice play by Dean Lowry. We talked about him earlier, six foot six, 290. Now you're hoping your tackle's going to cut him, get his hands down. There's no cut. Lowry just elevates athleticism, bats the ball in the air, and the big fella is rumbling, stumbling the other direction. Cirque has to make the tackle. NFL scouts love the five technique guy from Rockford. Coach Cut talking, always taking the opportunity to teach. Thomas Cirque got to try to change your arm angle, get that ball around the big defensive end. Normally when you're throwing the little swing screens, you got a big tackle like that, a big defensive end like that, you try to cut him, but nobody there to do that. Lowry with an 18-yard return gives him pretty good field position. Norman with the tackle on Jackson. Well, Bring Dwayne, up second and long. Dwayne Norman, Tim, number 40 there, made the conversion. He was one of the cheetahs. He was one of those guys in the back end that played safety. He rotates now up to play linebacker as they make some of the ch changes. Some of that has to do 
with Kelby Brown. We mentioned Kelby now in the box upstairs helping coach and work with the linebackers. Kelby's injury forced Norman to be in that linebacker role. Young Solomon Volt comes in the backfield now. They throw over the middle. That ball was tipped, incomplete. Will bring up third down and long. Well, another long yardage situation for the young quarterback. They just have done a really good job. Jim Knowles right there, defensive coordinator. They've really done a good job of winning on first and second down and forcing Northwestern into these really tough situations. They're just one for eight on third down conversions. They need 12 here to get the first. Came in 56% on the year on third down, but I'm fairly certain they weren't facing third and long all day long. Solomon Volk from Gaithersburg, Maryland, standing next to Thorson. They throw the out pattern poorly underthrown, intended for Vitali. Well, Duke heats him up with the blitz. Singleton comes on the safety blitz. Duke does a good job of walking up into it. 33 get a cut unblocked. Singleton right through the middle. And he gets enough pressure on Thorson where he rushes his delivery. He had an open receiver, but he was rushed on the throw incomplete. Nice winder comes on to punt again. Ryan Smith standing back at the 30. Nice winders average 43 yards a punt. Duke looks to get good field position again. It's a high knuckle ball. Smith will take this at the 24 yard line. Well, tough break for John Walford to be out of the game. Kendall Hinton at quarterback, the true freshman. This is Wilson with a nifty move, breaks the tackle and slides across the 35. Ball's loose. Northwestern comes up with it again. It looks like it's Iwabuke. That's called a fumble. This was very close. Iguabuike does a good job. Godwin Iguabuike comes across from the safety spot, and he's not really overly interested in tackling. Watch him rake at the football with his left hand. Going to come in, left hand inside. Now rake it out of there. It's does out. an excellent job of getting it out of there before Wilson was on the ground. So a turnover by Duke in that took away the football from Northwestern, and they're in the field, and now turnabout is fair play. Northwestern gets a turnover, and Duke's into the field. So Northwestern gets a new set of downs in their best starting field position of the yeah. afternoon. Thorson throws and has it complete to Jackson. And Jackson's all the way down to the 19-yard line. Well, First been, down, Northwestern. Been a frustrating day for Justin Jackson, a kid that is their big-time runner, just under 1,200 yards of, res, uh, of rushing last year, 22 receptions, averaged nine yards a catch, so a very accomplished receiver. They get him the football there. That was Northwestern's longest play of the afternoon, 21 yards. Here's Thorson around the left side. Saxton and a whole host of other Blue Devils make the tackle. Edwards got there first. Yeah, really did a good job with the quarterback power play that there. That time they got Justin Jackson out in front to block. And Thorson just had no running room, so tough play on first down. Now you got to figure that maybe they put the ball back in Thorson's hands to try to throw here. Something to Justin Jackson or something to Dan Vitale would not called his name. 107 through receptions. Here's Jackson, and he's hit immediately. Oh, what a great penetration by Dwayne Norman, the linebacker. We talked to defensive coordinator Jim Knowles yesterday, and he said, we're going to try to maybe blitz a little bit more. Here's Norman right here, just going to come right away and make the play. Nobody touches him. Steps right through the A-gap and makes the play. A little bit more pressure than you may have seen that maybe Northwestern saw from Duke on tape. They need 12 on third down. Overthrown, incomplete, intended for Solomon Volt, the young yeah. sophomore from Gaithersburg, Maryland. And I love the call. They call timeout. They're going to set the screen up for Volt. Watch the two really I am in release out in front and just a poor throw. Now, a little pressure in Thorson's face. He's got to find a way, arm angle, where he can get the ball to Volt because they had something going to the screen there. So Jack Mitchell comes on to attempt a 37 yard field goal, almost 38. Good snap, good hold, and the kick is good. He's now three for three this year from that distance. How about that? My what a way to end the first half. Let's go downstairs to Roddy Jones, who's with David Cutcliffe.
Coach, your defense has played pretty well in the first half, all in all. What are your thoughts on their play? Well, I thought our defense has played great in the first half. Northwestern's a good football team. Uh, it's been that kind of game. I thought we've kind of played in a box offensively, so our defense has been put back on the field time and time again, and they've certainly answered. And they've been put in some tough spots with the turnovers as well. What is your message to the team at halftime regarding that? Well, we're not going to turn the football over, but I don't want to play in a box. I want to see us get a little bit more aggressive offensively and make – Northwest is not doing anything schematic to stop us. They're whipping us. You can't get whipped and win a football game. Absolutely. Thanks, Coach. Let's go back to the studio with Katie and Coach. Welcome back to Durham, North Carolina, Wallace Wade Stadium, Brooksfield at Wallace Wade Stadium on the campus of Duke and the Blue Devils lead Northwestern 7-3. We're at the half. Welcome back inside, everybody. Tim Brant and Dave Archer with you. They've been carrying people out of the stands. Story today is the heat. Well, the heat and the inability of either one of these offenses to create something against these defense. These two teams are combined three for 19 on third down. In fact, Northwestern has fast, faced 10 third down situations. Eight of them have been seven yards or more. They have really struggled to move the ball. Let's take a look at our halftime stats presented by Duke Energy. Well, it's a defensive game. Why not feature two defensive players? Anthony Walker, 14 tackles. And Jeremy Cash, the safety for Duke, has six tackles. He's forced a fumble. He's been in the backfield. It's a defensive kind of game and these two guys are standing out. It has been a very physical game, and as we said, both teams feeling the heat, playing a lot of players. Right now, let's go down on that hot field. Roddy Jones. Coach, a little bit of a tough first half of the offense. What do you have to do to get that going? Anything. <laughs> I mean, you know, you got to credit Duke. They played really well. So, again, I think they had a huge advantage uh, from a standpoint of being able to be vanilla in the first two games. We've got a pretty good idea what they're doing now, and hopefully we've adjusted well. And, Heck of a football game. Defense had some timely turnovers late in the second half, uh, first half. How big were those for you? Well, we preached that, right? And so not only do you got to preach, you got to go out and do it. So proud of the guys. It's going to be a heck of a finish. Thanks, Thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Tim, back to you. All right, Roddy, thank you. Pat Fitzgerald with a smile on his face. He'd do anything. Well, think about it. It's a defensive guy, one of the great defensive players in the game uh, in college football. But how about this game? This is right down his alley. Duke bragging for the second year in a row. Duke is number eight in the annual college rankings by U.S. News and World Report. Northwestern's 12th. ACC football is brought to you in high definition by your local tire pros dealer. This is Solomon Volt around the corner. Solomon Volt. The sophomore is on the run inside the 20. Solomon Volt takes it all the way for a touchdown. Solomon Volt from Gaithersburg, Maryland. A 98-yard return. Boy, and the Duke fans just had settled back in and are shocked. The Northwestern fans that are here are high-fiving. What an excellent setup on the return. Watch Volt start to his right. And they set up the wall to the left side, and there's nobody home for Duke. And then Vault with the great speed to the outside. He gets one last block right there. And Vault shoves it in the end zone. What a nice opening, uh, nice start for Pat Fitzgerald's team. And that will really get into the skin of, of David Cutcliffe, who's a big special teams guy. Solomon Vault has had an 89-yard return, and the extra point kick is blocked. Looked like Kyler Brown made his knife through there and got a piece. Number 56. So now a guy that drifts deep for Duke <laughs> and Devon Edwards, who is as electric as Vault, the guy we just saw. You mentioned Vault's returning against Illinois a year ago. This guy's standing deep. Devon Edwards has four returns himself for touchdowns in his career. Matt Macucci. To Matt Macucci puts it on the ground, snubs it ahead. And Duke will take over at the 40-yard line. Schneider, Eric Schneider, the up man made the catch, returned to the yard. Well, pretty good trade-off, though, Tim. You're going to get the ball around the 40-yard line. They didn't even want to kick the ball to Devon Edwards. And so Duke scrimmages from the 40. Shaquille Powell will start a tailback for Duke here in the second half. Thomas Sirk, still your quarterback, scored the only touchdown for Duke today. This is Shark straight ahead. You know, as Cut, David Cook have left the field, Roddy Jones talked to him and he says, we got to stop playing in a box offensively. And Tommy Bowden talked about that at halftime as you look at the possessions for Duke, not much there other than touchdown off the Devon Edwards interception. 
they're going to start playing the ball now outside near the numbers. You're going to see bubble screens. You're going to see perimeter throws. He wants to get them out of the box. By the way, the tackle was made on that first down play by Anthony Walker. He now has 15 tackles. C.J. Robbins taps that pass, blocks it. He's the big 6'5", 300-pound senior from Florida. And that'll bring up third down and six. And now Northwestern subs in uh, the group they like to rush the passer with. A little bit lighter group up front now to try to get after Cirque in the passing game. Cirque now looks over to the Duke sideline. Gets the call. Shaquille Powell in backfield with him. Sturk throws behind the, the intended receiver, Braxton Deaver, who never even saw it coming. He had gone deep running off Matthew Harris. They got into a little bump and grind act over here. Well, and it's something they worked on in practice. Deaver spread out wide. He's an outstanding pass receiving tight end, but he's working against a corner. You're looking for him to match up with a safety. The corner, that's a mismatch for Northwestern. In the slot, Janelle Barnes was matched up on a safety. That might have been where Cirque needed to look. So Northwestern wins that first battle. Will Mundy ended the first half with a 70-yard punt. He kicks this one into the end zone for a touchback. That'll be 56 yards officially. First down and 10, little shuffle pass straight ahead. This is Vitali. Vitali has a big gainer, still on his feet across the 40. Well, we wondered when we'd see the super back, Vitaly, and his versatility. Tight end, fullback, slot receiver. Here he's lined up as a wing, going to shovel the pass back inside. This is 108th career reception for Vitaly, and you can see his ability to run after the catch. Picks up 21 yards before DeAndre Singleton finally took him down. Gives Jackson a breather on first down and 10. This is long to the 40. Singleton again with a tackle. He's got three tackles in the last 15 seconds. Well, good block on the perimeter by Christian Jones. Here's Cash. Going to get past the, ta the block of Scanlon there, but Gant looked. Scanlon got enough of him that took Cash out of the play, so good perimeter blocking. Christian Jones also got a block to the inside. Second down and five. They fake it to Warren Long. This is Sirk, or Thorson rather. Thorson around the corner, and Thorson has a first down for Northwestern. Another big gain. Best drive they've had yet. This is a 20 yard pickup. A good Cash play knocked him out of bounds. Good play by Vitali out in space. Watch Vitali, 40, come across. Going to get the block on Norman right there, and that frees Thorson down the sidelines for the big run. And you're right, Tim. This is as good as they look. First down and 10. At the 20, Jackson back in the ball game. This is Jackson, and he'll lose yardage. Cash, Jeremy Cash came hard. A loss of six. He just has outstanding instincts in the run game. When, did, when can you knife to the inside? When do I have to keep leverage? He's done all of that today. This time he decides to squeeze the trigger, knife to the inside, and make the play. Eight tackles now for Jeremy Cash. He's going to come underneath. There was a blocker there. He decided to, to go ahead and get after it and made the play. This is Jackson again. He's cut. Nowhere to go. Loses yardage again. Saxon and Williams. Williams got there first, but it's a loss of two. Well, Saxon, the corner, going to force the way back to the inside for Williams to make the tackle. So good team defense there. And here we go. Another third and long, extra long situation here. Can't take a sack if you're Thorson. Outstanding kicker in Mitchell. You want to stay in field goal range. Thorson cuts, breaks one tackle, gets down to the 27. Jeremy Cash again to pick up a three. Kyler Brown applied the pressure. Well, the devil defensive end. They call him the devil position. Kyler Brown does a good job of keeping leverage to the outside. Forces Thorson, Thornton back, Thorson back to the inside. And who's there? Number 16, Jeremy Cash to make the play. So good job by two seniors there, Kyler Brown and Jeremy Cash. A 44-yard attempt by Jack Mitchell. He's one for two from this range this year. Good snap, good hold. He's got the distance. And it's good. 
Well, excellent drive, Pat Fitzgerald. Extremely pleased with his offense. They finally moved the football for him. And although it only results in three, you've got to be excited about the fact you moved it if you're Northwestern. Northwestern grinding on a hot day. Staying ahead of the Blue Devils. Boy, if you come down there to Durham, you really need to check this out. The Duke Gardens, a premier public garden with living collections, over five miles of walking trails, native plants, open spaces. It's free to the public 365 days a year. It's a project that began back in 1935 with a gift from Sarah Pete Duke, widow of the university's founder, Benjamin Duke. Well, Wildcats finally got something going offensively. We saw the kickoff return, but they had not done anything offensively. First nine drives, just 57 yards, 53 in that drive alone. And they looks like they found some things they can get to that might be able to be exploited in the second half. Devon Edwards looks for a little crease. They get him at the 29-yard line, maybe the 30. Here's the play action. Thomas Sirk keeps it. Across the 40 to the 44 yard line. Tackle made by Drew Smith. Well, classic zone read play. Going to read the edge player. Edge player crashes. He pulls it. Steps inside the block of Lucas Patrick. And he's up the field. Excellent job of reading the play by Thomas Sir. So after a gain of 13, it's first down Duke. Shaquille Powell back in the ball game now for Duke. He's got a hole. He finds some open area. And he explodes all the way down inside the 30 to the 27 yard line. Travion Henry finally made the tackle. But a big gainer for the Devils, a pickup of 30 yards. Well, give Scotty Montgomery a ton of credit. He just keeps leaning on that offensive line. Can you get that interior five guys blocked? That time they did. Shaq Powell stepped through the hole. First down and 10. Good decision by Sir to keep it, tuck it away, get down to the 25. Final 18 seconds of the period. Prater made the tackle. <laughs> Try to get off one more play in the end of the third. Sir with the keeper. Spins his way down to the 24 yard line. Dean Lowry with the tackle, and that'll be the last play of the third period. The end of the third quarter at Brooks Field in Wallace Wade Stadium. 12 to 7 Northwestern as we head to the final 15 minutes in Durham. It's both have struggled. Uh, when you look at the quarterbacks, Thorson under 50% completion, only 65 yards, and he's got the picks. But on the other side, you look at what Cirque's doing, 101 yards on 27 attempts. That's only 3.7 yards an attempt. So both defenses are getting it done. Duke hasn't scored. This is Cirque straight ahead. Duke hadn't scored since 9-17 mark of the first quarter. Dean Lowry with the tackle as we start the final 15 minutes here at Duke. Clock didn't start there. And I don't think anybody on the field has recognized the fact that it didn't start, even yeah. though they ran that free play. Oh, it will be free eventually. They'll eventually fix the clock. There's always someone holding a handheld time that they'll fix the clock. Yeah, the official time is actually kept on the field by the officials. This is Ross Martin with a field goal attempt. From 38 yards, and it's good. That moves Ross Martin in his sixth all time in ACC scoring with that field goal. He had tied it with his his uh, extra point attempt. Now sixth all time alone. He's had a good career. Six for six on the year. It may come down to his foot. Now they trail by two in the fourth quarter. Well, Northwestern had the big win on opening day against Stanford, 21st ranked Stanford. As you mentioned, Tim, Northwestern in the poll, in both polls for the first time in quite some time. Austin Anderson is back for Northwestern now as a true freshman to return. He's got eight carries for 59 yards this year as a running back. This will be his first kickoff return if it goes his way. Solomon Bolt is back there with him. So Northwestern has speed, 
and speed. This will be Vault. But we'll take it three yards deep in the end zone and says, no, sir. First down and 10, Wildcats. 14-25 to play. Jackson straight ahead, big hole, across the 30 to 31 yard line. Tackle made by Carmichael after a gain of six. Well, we've been going down to Roddy Jones, and, and I want to ask Roddy, when you start talking about the heat downstairs and, and when it begins to start to take effect, this is that time, Roddy, in the fourth quarter. This is definitely that time, and Jeremy Cash on the sideline was telling everybody to forget about the heat, leave it all in the field in the fourth quarter, and that big offensive line for Northwestern may be starting to wear on the, the defensive line for Duke. Ball is tipped, still caught by Vitale, and should be enough for the first down. How about that play? Boy, nice play by Vitale to concentrate on this ball that's tipped around the line of scrimmage. Mentioned his ability to line up in multiple spots, lined up in the little slot, ball tipped to the line of scrimmage. He concentrates, squeezes it, gets both feet down for the first down. Knocked out of bounds by Devon Edwards. It'll be first down for Northwestern. They run the option, quick pitch early. And Jackson gets tattooed. Wayne Norman hit him and let him know he was coming. Cash number 16 going to keep the outside leverage to force Jackson back to the inside and Norman coming from inside out uh, lays the hit but still a good four yard pickup pretty close to four yards for Jackson. Norman left his calling card second down and seven for the Wildcats. Little delay for Jackson and Jackson bangs his way out across the 45 yard line. Well, we talked to Roddy and we and he, we heard what Car Jeremy Cash was telling his defensive uh, players that are going to go out on the field. But you can start to see it now where Northwestern's offensive line now playing more and more on Duke's side of the line of scrimmage getting four and five yards of carry there another four yard pickup or five yard pickup for Jackson and a third and short here. Cats go with a bigger back. This is Warren Long 210 pounds. Look out. Breaks through that first line, gets in the secondary, gone. Northwestern, touchdown. Warren Long. 55 yards. The Long came in averaging just under five yards a carry. Has not toted it much today, but everybody up for Duke to try to stop the third and short. If you can break that first line, there's nobody else left. And Warren Long races for a touchdown. Really good job by Northwestern to get the block. And how about the guy out in front of the block that led the play? Dan Vitale out there on the edge. It created the crease for Long. Extra point attempt. Yes, sir. Splits the sticks. Jack Mitchell adds an extra point, 19 to 10, with 12:31 remaining. Northwestern. Warren goes long. And Singleton couldn't catch him. Campus is quiet now. There a shockwave has just come over Duke. Warren Long's longest rush of his career, 55 yards. Up here, Duke, everybody up, gonna block down, block down, and the kick out blocked by Vitale. Everybody up for Duke, get a kick out by Vitale, 40 and Long, right in behind that block for the touchdown. Duke had committed all the resources to the line of scrimmage, and as soon as Long creased it, it was a foot race, and he put it in the end zone. Matt Micucci with the kick, and this will be Devon Edwards with the return. Looks for a block, kicks it to the outside, gets near the sidelines, and that's going to be the end of the line at the 24-yard line. Time now a factor. You're absolutely right. 7.53 to play. Throws the pass. Has it complete. Ramming. This is 14th reception of the season. Van Hoos with the tackle. Well, much better job by the true freshman there, ramming and coming back to the ball. The one prior to that, he stopped coming back and the ball was knocked out. This time, he secures the catch. Does look like Crowder, doesn't he? He does. That three helps, too. <laughs> I'd like to have Jameson back right now. Sirk has to throw that one away and does. Xavier Washington had a lot of pressure coming. Well, he actually had Duke protection there, and, and Duke was covered initially, and nobody trying to separate. Got to find a way to get some separation as Northwestern kind of matched up on all the Duke receivers there. You guys have that clock in your head, quarterbacks. He just felt it running out. Pack Powell back in the ball game. He'll run the little swing pattern. Gets out in the flats and 
a good short tackle made out there by Drew Smith. Well, and you said it. That's the key to this whole deal for Northwestern. They're playing zone coverage, and they're kind of forcing Cirque to throw the ball underneath. Well, if you're going to do that, now you got to make open field tackles. Excellent job out in space right here to get Shaq Powell on the ground by Smith. Duke just two of 15 on third down conversions. They need nine. They've got the first. This is Shaq Powell. Shaquille Powell pushes it all the way across the 45 to the 46 yard line. Tackle made there by Nate Hall. Well, when you think about a guy that's made it seem like every tackle today is Anthony Walker. Well, this is one he misses. And Shaq Powell steps through the arm tackle and has a first down. That's a pickup of 16 yards. 6.55 to play. Cirk looks deep, throws deep, and ramming. Can't get to it. Well, Ramey got held a little bit on the play, and the youngster kind of shut it down. Got to remember, you're live all the time, and again, it's a it's a learning process for some of these young players. He's a true freshman, the Keatron High School big time program in Powder Springs, Georgia. But that time, he kind of quit running when he got held. Second down and 15 to go for Duke. Sirk again throws underneath. The ball's dropped. Intended for Shaquille Powell. Boy, those are the situations that Northwestern's giving up. They're taking away the down the field throw, dropping seven into coverage. So Cirque's laying the ball off to these talented backs. You got to squeeze the football and make somebody miss. Brings up third down and 15. Kind of down to the give a coach nightmares. Cirque with good protection throws over the middle and is hit immediately back at the original line of scrimmage Shaquille Powell again the underneath throw well, pick up of six on third and 16 or whatever it was they're going to give that up that's that's exactly where Northwestern wants you to throw the football because they're going to let their big time linebacker Walker rally up and make the play so Northwestern's doing a good job of forcing Duke into long yardage situations on third second and third down and they're forcing Cirque to throw it underneath and they're just not getting anything out of it. Here's Will Monday, and you have to wonder why he's not trying to just pooch this thing inside the 20. This is a good kick here. Hits inside the 20, and Duke will chase it all the way down to the 10. Now that's a 48-yard punt, and that's a quality punt. Backs Northwestern up. We'll be back after a word from your local ACC station with 6.03 remaining. We've got 6.03 remaining in the ball game here. This is the Worst start of the worst field position start for the Wildcats all afternoon. They continue to lead 19 to 10, but this is a dangerous situation right here with plenty of time left. That's Jackson. Well, Duke is going to go ahead and burn a timeout now. David Cuthbert made the tackle decided to burn a timeout now with that, just under six minutes to go. You were very good at it. Second down at six. Jackson in the ball game. He's the ball carrier. Pushes the pile. Carlos Ray will get credit for being there first. Gain of three. Again, Duke will take a timeout here, realizing that Northwestern is going to be careful with their young quarterback, not put him in a situation where he could turn it over. And a big third down play for both teams. 5.58 to play in the game. Solomon Vault in the ball game now. And incomplete. It was intended for Schuler, who had gotten behind the secondary of Duke. Well, he was running a clearing route, probably never thinking his quarterback was throwing the ball. They were trying to clear the corner out and throw the ball in the flat to vault. But a good job by Carmichael to take away that throw. But if he gets it out there, it might be a touchdown. Wow. Alonzo Saxon was chasing him, but after the fact, Ryan Smith. Waiting for nice winders punt. This is a wobbler and it's put on the ground by Duke. Let's see who came up with it. And it's going to be Northwestern. Well, the like, ball looked like it handcuffed Smith. It looked like it hit him right in the face, man. Yeah, it was a knuckleball. You're right. Hit him right in the face. Watch this ball come down. He's fighting the sun a little bit. Fair catch. Yeah, just jumped up in his face mask. Got too far underneath it. And then 
That's a tough matchup there as they're wrestling underneath the pile. Boy, that's a big, big play in what has been a fairly clean ball game. Let's go down to Roddy. You and I were talking before the game about fielding punts, and punts like that are really hard. The nose doesn't turn over at all. It's tough to predict, and there is a slight breeze down here. Not a lot, but just the slightest bit on a punt like that can make it go a little bit further than you want it to, and that's what looked like happened on that punt return. Well, and, Roy, and how about the contribution? Warren Long, the guy that has the long touchdown run, is the guy that made the recovery on the play, so contributing in a lot of ways. Justin Jackson comes into the ball game as the running back for the Wildcats on first down and 10. Now everybody getting a little testy down there. Breon Borders will get credit for the tackle, but there was a whole host of Blue Devils in there. Well, two score game now for Northwestern, so they'll be very content to sit on the ball. And if they don't get a first down, they'll completely flip the field on Duke. Duke was going to be in great position at round midfield. But fumbled the punt, and so now Northwestern going to be very content to sit on the ball and get it. You're going to get a steady diet of Justin Jackson. Second down and eight. Clock continues to move. 5:03, 5:02. Jackson to the 46-yard line. Gain of two. Wayne Norman was there first to make the tackle. The third down situation here, I would assume that Northwestern will run again, and David Cutcliffe will probably burn his time out to try to save as much time as he can. Only one timeout left in his pocket. The okay. two very well coached teams, Arch. Yeah, they, they've, they've played really hard and tough and physical. Both defenses obviously have dictated what's happened in the game. Thorson keeps it on the quarterback keeper. Got the first down inside the 40 to the 38 yard line. Dwayne Norman tripped him up after a gain of nine, but they'll move the chains and with 414 left, it's getting late early. And watch the young quarterback at the end of this. He knows where the first down is. See him go down right there? He doesn't run out of bounds. You talk about a young guy kind of understanding what's going on in the game. He could have easily run out of bounds right there. He fell on the ground, knew the clock was moving. That's thinking through the game. You got to love that in a young quarterback. Justin Jackson stays in the game behind Thorson. Now comes up. Jackson looks for that big hole and carries it inside the 30. Down close to another first down. Carmichael again is there first to make the tackle. Here's our ACC standings brought to you by Belk. Clemson with a nice win Thursday night. Florida State with a nice win last night. Not as pretty as some of those fans had wanted. How about the Coastal Division? Yeah, nobody's played each other. Got a big Duke-Georgia Tech game coming up in a couple weeks. Of course, Georgia Tech takes on Notre Dame, but yeah, next weekend Duke huge. will travel, or actually Georgia Tech travels here to take on Duke in a big coastal battle. Justin Jackson now over 100 yards as he tries to get the first down, and he does. And that might be Katie Bar the door under three minutes to play now. As well, they continue to melt the clock and shorten the game. Yeah, and we've talked about throughout the day the, uh, how warm it's been here and, and how we knew those trench guys. Can you rotate enough guys in? How fresh can you say both coaches have worked really hard to keep fresh players on the field as best they can? But you can see Northwestern's offensive line. You can see it start to happen in the midway through the third quarter. They were starting to start to take control of the line of scrimmage. First down and 10 for the Wildcats as they try to get out of here with a W against the ACC. Jackson tiptoes his way across the 20. Down inside to the 19, the 18. Price with the tackle. Tip turnovers usually when you're in a battle, a close battle like this will turn the tables and that certainly has been the case. Here's the, the interception by Lowry. Spectacular play by the big defensive end. The equal week a strip led to uh, the big Obviously, the big uh, field goal at the end of the half for, for Northwestern. And, of course, that big fumble there kept Duke's offense off of the field. It's something that Coach Cutcliffe's teams pride themselves on. You're not going to beat yourselves. You're going to turn the football over. And uh, they have, have had a tough time hanging on the ball today. You know, I don't think Justin Jackson will look back at this and say it was one of my prettiest games, but it sure was his 
most durable game as he takes it around the right side and inside the 10 yard line. He's going to be closing in on 100 yards. He's over 100. Just went over 100 yards, and that was his 35th carry, which is the a career high. 35 carries. Think about his opening day weekend where he carried the ball 28 times for 134 yards against Stanford. Came back, solid effort in game two, and here today, a workhorse effort, 35 carries over 100 yards. He's now run for 100 yards in yeah. eight of his last 11 games if you go back to 2014. You talked about him in the pregame. Said they'd be going to their horse, and there's no question they have 35 times. They go to their victory formation now with 139 remaining. And on first down, they'll just use every one of these downs and let that clock roll. And fans start to depart the premises at Brooks Field at Wallace Wade Stadium. Well, tough loss for Duke. You're not going to be able to dwell on it very long. As we mentioned, the Yellow Jackets come to town next weekend, and it's going to be a similar type game. You better be able to stop the run game against Georgia Tech. They did a really good job of that down in Atlanta a year ago, getting David Cutcliffe his first win ever against the Yellow Jackets. And so it'll be a tough task with the Jackets coming in here, and it'll be their first game in conference. Well, the renovation and transition continues in Durham. As we go under one minute. And the final 45 seconds of this ball game. Hard fought, hot physical game. 19 to 10 is our score. Third down and 14 now for uh, the good Wildcats. Win. Good win for Pat Fitzgerald's team. Coming on the road last year, they got off to such a poor start, lost their first two, beat two ranked teams a year ago. But uh, this year they're off to a really good start, ranked in the top 25, and they get on the road and beat a good Duke team on the road that has been very good in their own building. And that's it. There's nothing Duke can do now. Northwestern walks out with a win. Go to 3-0 and on the season. And that 23 ranking will move up a little bit for the Wildcats. And it's now official. Last second, 19 to 10 Northwestern wins. For highlights and must-see moments from this game and others, check out theacc.com. Join us for the ACC Blitz, powered by Ram Trucks, next Saturday at noon, followed by Indiana taking on Wake Forest. Arch and I will be there. You've been watching coverage of the Atlantic Coast Conference football on the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. For Rodney Jones, Dave Archer, I'm Tim Brandt. So long from Durham.